Mm. Hello, everyone. This is the Mechanics of Material course. And this video, I'm going to show you another example to for the simplification, simplification of a force and couple system. Okay, I think because I think this section you need more example. Okay, so let's look at example 3.20 in the textbook. Okay, so it says there's a member here. There's a member or some some square squares square square object. Okay, square or oh, square object here. And then there's I think this is a three hinges. Okay, three hinges. Okay. And you apply a force on these three hinges, okay? And uh, and can also give you the geometry information. It says, okay, we do the simplification of the system, and finding the result, result simplification, make a simplification of the system, find the resultant force, and then determine the position of resultant force, okay? Okay, we're on a pedestal. Okay, what does pedestal mean? Okay, let me check. Uh, on the pedestal. Okay, what did pedestal mean? Let me check. Pedestal. Pedestal. Zuo. Okay. Okay. Pedestal. Okay. Yeah, it's called zuo di or ji zuo. Okay, it's called zuo di or ji zuo. Okay, so this object is called pedestal. Okay, this object. Okay, for this simplification problem, okay, that we just in previous video I just say okay, okay, find a resultant force first. Okay, find a resultant force first. Find a resultant force. Find a re the resultant force. And then, and then second, you know, use use the moment balance. Moment balance, B A L A N C, to determine determine the position position of the resultant force. Okay, and then we finish the simplification. Okay, and the concept is before and after before and after simplification, the resultant force and resultant moment are the same. Okay, so you will create an equivalent system. Okay, so let's look at this. Okay, first of all, okay, so the resultant force, because it's a 3D problem, so the resultant force, we would have the X component and Y component and Z component. And Z component. And then I, I make a, okay, I make a, Note here it's before simplification, before simplification. Okay, okay, so before simplification, let's see. Okay, because all these force, when you look at these forces, F force A, force L, oh, oh, it's force A here, and force B here, and force C here. They all point to the along the z direction or positive z direction or negative z directions. Okay, there is no x component, y component of these forces. So the resultant force of x component, y component must be zero. Okay, very good. So it's, it's only one dimensional. So it's only had the z the z dimension. Only one uh one it's along, looks like it's all, this force only one dimension. Oh, that's good. That's easy for calculation. Okay, but I think this is because this is an example problem, so it doesn't make a very complicated case. Okay, okay, so okay, so let's calculate the resultant force. Okay, and uh, let's start with force A, and here we use a convention: is okay, point up is positive, point down is negative, up in positive z direction, neg and down is negative z direction. So the force A is point downwards, point down to negative z direction. So here we say it's minus thirty. Okay. Is force A and force B also point down. So uh, I think I'll write here. Yeah, I don't have space here. 
Oh, let me check. Okay, force Z. Okay, force A minus thirty. But you have to be careful. You need minus thirty mean means minus thirty kilonewton. Okay, and force B point downwards and minus fifty. And force C is point upwards, so it's plus ten. Okay, so eventually you will have the minus seventy kilo kilonewton. Okay, so the negative means it's point down negative z direction. So you will, I think the, you will see some textbook write okay, says six kilo newton and point downward. Okay, but that's like, that same meaning. Okay, okay, before and after. So let's say also before simplification, after simplification. So after simplif after sim. Simplification, because before and after the resultant force must be the same. So after simplification, okay, f r x equal to f r y and equal to zero, and f r resultant force is also negative seventy kilonewton. Yeah, before and after simplification, the resultant force must be the same. And Okay, that's the first criteria. Okay, the second criteria you must be have the moment before and after simplification. So, okay, the next thing we have to solve the. Okay, let's start with the uh result. Uh, calculate the moment before simplification. Okay, this is the most uh, annoying part. Uh, okay, this is three D problem, and now we have a three axes. So when you calculate the moment, you have to be careful. You have to be cal. You have to calculate the moment with respect to x axis and the moment with respect to y. Axis and the moment with respect to moment with respect to z axis. Okay, and one thing you you and I can guarantee that the moment and z moment with respect to the z axis will be zero. Okay, because these forces are along the z direction, no matter positive z or negative z. Okay, and these forces is along the z direction, so these they are parallel to the z z axis. So this force won't create any moment with respect to z axis. Okay, because these force are all parallel, and this is a symbol of parallel parallel to z axis. So this don't no this force no create a moment. Okay, because this. The force and x rotation axis z they are parallel to each other, so they won't create any moment. Okay, so the moment z zero. Okay, of course. Okay, and now we have x moment with respect to x axis and y axis. Okay, so this we will we have to spend some time for here for this two for this two problem for this two. Have you spend some time? So let's start with the moment with respect to the. X axis, and here we can ignore for the moment with respect to x axis. We can ignore the force A. Okay, we can ignore the force A because the force A is acting on the x axis. Force A is acting on the x axis, so this force won't create any moment because the lever arm is zero. Okay, convince this to yourself. Okay, this lever arm is zero. Well, this lever arm is zero, so we don't have to consider this force. Okay, so but the force B and force C, we have to consider. Okay, force B. Let's start with it. Or、oh, the force B, the magnitude is fifty. And what is lever arm? Be careful. Our rotation axis. We are calculating the moment with respect to the the x axis. So the the lever arm is here, zero point two. Okay. So in the scalar scalar formula for moment, you only need to know is you only need the magnitude and lever arm, and you have to and then, okay, and then you have to uh use the you have determine it's clockwise and counterclockwise, and this will give this will give you a positive sign or negative sign. Okay, here the force is point down. Will F B the force is point downward, and the rotational axis is here. Okay, so this will create a、um, a clockwise clockwise rotation. So clockwise rotation will be negative. Okay, this force B and force C is here. Okay, force C here. Okay, rotational axis is x axis.
And so the, the level arm is 0 0.04. So here is 10 times 0 0.4. Okay, maybe I should block this. Okay. So the magnitude of the force and times the level arm and then I have determined it's clockwise or counterclockwise. This is point upward and rotational axis is here. So it will create a clockwise rotation, right? Clockwise rotation. So it will become a negative. So the moment with respect to x axis will be this will be 10. This will be four. So it's minus 14. Okay, that's before simplification. Okay, here, and then we have to consider the moment with res rotating with respect to the y-axis, okay. And here we have to also, okay, do the same analysis. And uh, here, maybe I change to another color. Okay, for the rotating with respect to y-axis, we can ignore the force C, okay, because force C is acting on the y-axis. Force C is acting at the y-axis. Okay, so this force won't create any moment. So only we only kind of consider force A and force B. Okay, let's start with the force A. Force A is pointing downward. Okay, and the rotating axis is y-axis. So the labor arm is zero point four. And okay, so we had the magnitude is thirty, and the labor arm is zero point four. And okay, the force is the force is pointing downward and the rotate along uh, with respect to y axis. So it will create a counterclockwise rotation. It will create a counterclockwise rotation. So it will be positive. Okay, the other is force B. Okay, force B magnitude is fifty and rotating axis is here. Okay, because rotating axis is here, so it's zero point four. And the force B is pointing downwards and rotating axis is the Y axis. So it will create a clockwise rotation. Okay, be careful. And clockwise will be negative. So add them together. So it's 12 minus 12 minus 12. Really? 12 minus 12 minus. Oh, what's this? So, so that's 12 minus 20, so it's negative A. Hmm? Did, did I calculate right? Let me check. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, <laughs> negative 8. <laughs> yeah, negative 8, okay. So we, we have the moment with respect, we had the moment, we had moment before simplification, we had moment before the simplification, x axis minus 14, y axis minus 8. Okay, okay, and then we use the concept before and after the resultant moment are the same, okay? And yeah, like I said, this problem want to do the uh, for, uh, simplification, okay? Want to know the magnitude of resultant force and also want to know the Known where is this where where is the position of the resultant force? So so let's assume okay because we already know resultant force the resultant force the magnitude is uh, seventy and it's pointing downward. So let's assume okay let's assume maybe let's assume it's acting as here and uh, it's y it's x x is here x coordinate y coordinate and point downward so it's called resultant force and point downward because negative and magnitude is 70 kilonewton and we just assume it's on the first quadrant okay quadrant means xiangxian. let's assume it's it's for the position is in the xiangxian, first quadrant okay yeah we just yeah if you don't know where is the pos where where is the position just assume it's in first in, in the first uh, quadrant okay if you don't know it's which quadrant it will be, just assume it's on first quadrant, D Xiang Xian. Just assume it's in D Xiang Xian. Okay. That will make life your life easier. Okay. So okay, so uh okay, I don't have space here. So okay, let me write down, let me summarize this here. Okay, before simplification. Okay, we all know already know the results, the, the force. So I here we can say before simplification, let me write down this. Before simplification, we have m x axis minus fourteen and m y 
axis is minus a and the axis is a zero okay very good okay so that's what we're going to do is after simplification after simplification okay and then let me erase these let me erase these let me erase these okay let's see after the simplification okay after simplification the moment the moment with respect to x axis okay okay after simplification simplification we only have one resultant force and then we calculate the moment with respect to the x axis so it's equal to so it's fr times the lever arm okay the lever arm is y lever arm is y and uh, this is the magnitude times the lever on and then we have determined it's positive or negative so this uh, fr here is, and rotation axis is here so it will create a clockwise rotation and clockwise rotation so it will become a negative so you because it's generated clockwise uh, clockwise yeah it generate a clockwise okay convinced by yourself it generate a clockwise a moment okay after simplification moment with respect to y axis if your resultant the magnitude of resultant force and times the lever arm lever arm is x because your right now your rotating axis is y axis so this is your lever arm okay the coordinate of x is your lever arm okay and it will create okay positive or negative moment so the force is here and then it's rotating with respect to y axis so it's counterclockwise so it will become a positive okay and before and after this and before and after simplification the, the resultant moment must be the same and its component by com and their component also must be the same okay that's the vector component equal to oh okay okay so let's write down let's write down the final equation okay before simplification in x axis minus 14 and eh? equal to minus resultant magnitude resultant force times y so you will get y is equal to 0 0.2 and before simplification, uh, re moment, re moment, result moment y axis minus a. So it will be, it will be, it will equal to 70 times x. So x is, I think it's minus 0 0.114. Okay, let me check this correct. So minus a divided by 70. Yeah, minus 0 0.114. Okay, so we will get this is a. Uh, this is a coordinate of a, a coordinate of your resultant uh, okay this is a res where is where the resultant force acting on okay and we find that is x is uh, minus y is plus so actually it will it, it looks like it is looks like is i think it looks like it's here okay look at that the, the position is here looks like it's position maybe like here okay okay x is negative y is positive so x ah sorry so x is negative y is positive okay sorry here 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 x is negative y is positive so its position looks like it looks like here and the, the the yellow dot okay that's the position of the, where the resultant force acting at okay yeah but before but in the calculation we just assume it's in first quadrant okay and after your calculation the answer will tell you the position which which quadrant this force will be okay would be okay so in during the calculation we just assume it at the first quadrant x y and then you get you see this right x the final result x is negative y is positive okay so just so assume everything is in positive will give you makes your life easier okay assume the position in the first quadrant will make your life easier okay the answer will tell you which quadrant this world will be okay so okay i think i think you need you need to convince yourself on this okay maybe you are not very really 
we are not you are not really familiar with this this assumption okay okay here is the okay simplification problem okay and i i i and this in my powerpoint i will have other simple is simple example to let let you calculate the result simplification problem and i got also give you the answer so try this by yourself okay because this will use a lot okay during the mechanics of materials calculation okay so okay so i just i've started a video here because this video is kind of too long so i'll start video here see you bye bye mm -hmm. ah why is well <laughs>